Shadow of the Eagle, uh, Battle of Medellin, 1809, by the River Guadjana. Hmm. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna have to check the pronunciation of that. Um. Um. It is uh, the second turn Spanish phase. Uh, so again, we're gonna look at a movement, French defensive fire, Spanish offensive fire and then Spanish shock combat. Um, because all um, five Spanish divisions are under attack orders, I'm just gonna review one more time. Under the attack order, units are not obligated to move, but if they do, they must end the turn closer to enemy units. At least two units of the command, at least two units of the command must have combat, fire or shock, if at all possible. So that is what we'll do, probably each division will lead and try to make contact with half of it, half of the division, keep a second half as a basically a second echelon. Um, the one thing that I'm not sure I've paid much attention to is that it does take, let me, let me see the exact, exact details for zones of control. So units have a zone of control that extends into their frontal and flank hexes, which, by the way, I haven't talked about that either. In this game, um, the front hexes of a unit are the two front and the two flank hexes. So like that, not the two rear hexes. So they extend into their frontal and flank hexes, units that are allowed to enter an enemy zoc. Oh, by their orders. Yeah, some orders do not allow you to enter enemy's arc, but if you're allowed to, like under an attack order, um, you pay one extra movement point to enter a zoc. Units must stop if they enter a frontal zoc of an enemy unit. Okay, so you can pass by, so you can pass by an enemy flank, paying an extra movement point, but if you enter one of the front hexes, you stop. Um, Units may leave enemy Zox at the beginning of their movement, and this costs no additional movement points. The moving unit must, however, pass a morale check to do so. It is permitted to move directly from one enemy Zox to another. Okay, so, and finally, just one more rule. Hexes containing trees and buildings block enemy Zox. Units in such hexes possess regular Zox, which extend into adjacent hexes unless those are trees or buildings. Okay. So, we will advance the Spanish line, and, I mean, I think this is the time to be the most aggressive as possible. The only problem is um, blocking the Spanish artillery. So I will still try to keep fire lanes open, but, but even then, I think um, artillery units are going to have to uh, start thinking about entering... Um, I have to start thinking about entering uh, limbered formation. So back here on the Spanish left, far left, this is the first division here. Um, Hena, Hena Strosa division. Um, since I want, or am thinking, would like these two infantry units together to move into this hex here next to the uh, um, French cavalry there. Um, because this is an 8 strength unit and this is a 12 strength unit, so together it's going to be 20 strength points in one hex if I can move them in there. Um, let's talk about uh, stacking. So in theory, stacking within a hex is unlimited, but there are restrictions for fire, shock, camp, combat, and movement. Um, so infantry in square, 18 strength points, or three units in addition to any artillery. This limit applies at the end of movement. So we don't have infantry in square here. Units with maneuver orders. All of these Spanish units have attack orders. But units with maneuver orders, eight strength points and four strength points of cavalry. This limit applies only to units with maneuver orders, and they may stack with units that do not have maneuver orders. So basically, that makes it sound like Units with maneuver orders are spread out more, which means that they are less dense within any given hex. 
and then forest and buildings, 18 strength points at any time. Um, okay. So, so none of those restrictions apply. So let's move. So this is one and two for entering the Zoc, uh, the enemy Zoc, and the same. Actually, the top unit, I need to pay attention to the top unit. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the higher morale uh, unit on top. I have a, I have an E morale and a C morale. The larger unit it has lower morale, but I'm going to put the eight strength C morale unit on top. All right. Um, now, having done that, what is the limit? I said. I think they're limited to firing 18, no. Units fire in their respective fire phases. Infantry fire into adjacent hexes. A maximum of six strength points per hex may fire. That is significant. Firing units must be placed on top. So, um, I was thinking of assault, by the way. Close assault is, I think it's 18 or 12 to 18. A maximum of 18 combat points may attack across a single hex side. Attack again meaning in this case shock combat. But fire is like so... But that's okay. They're masked for close combat even if only six strength points can fire across that hex. Okay. Um, that's all I wanted to talk to talk about there stacking and reviewing how many are going to be able to fire across that hex side and how many are going to be able to conduct close uh, combat. I'll go ahead and talk about artillery movement. <clears throat> this is light artillery because it has one dot here. Spanish uh, light artillery. Light artillery has a range of four hexes which means that there is no enemy that's in within range from here. So it's time to limber them. They spend one MP to limber. So I put a limber marker on top of them. Um, so that's one and Spanish artillery has a movement allowance of three. So that's one to limber. And I'll go two, three. And then they'll unlimber next turn. Um, yep. Just a few remarks about movement before I get to French. I've moved all the Spanish units forward. Um, a few remarks before I get to French defense of fire. Um, here's one rule that I don't know what is uh, what it's about, but uh, I have one interpretation, which is very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a rule like this. But again, maybe this is something that would be familiar to a, a miniatures player, a, a miniatures Napoleonics player. Um, the rule says a unit or units may not pass through pass through a frontal or rear hex side containing eight or more points of units, which of course is funny wording because how does a hex side contain any units, any points of units? But, but, well, there's one way to look at it. The next sentence is they may do so if it is a flank hex side they are passing through. So that's it. These two sentences about passing through and referencing eight or more points of units. Now, I'm thinking, which again, I've never heard anything like this. Are they saying that, let's see, here's, here's, a, uh, here's a 12 strength unit right here. Are they saying that a unit, let's take this guy back here, um, are they saying that, let's see, are they saying, huh, containing eight or more points of units? First, I was wondering, are they saying that the unit like this cannot pass through basically front to back or back to front, but they can pass through sideways. I guess they would have to be going this way because units enter their front hex, move through their front hexes. So are they saying the unit can go 
this way through the but not that way. That's strange because that's strange because you're not violating any any stacking limits that I can think of. I don't know, maybe you are. I'm not sure what that's but I'm not sure what that rule is for. Well I'll just let that rule stand, uh, sit for now. The other thing it, it spells out is that you, uh, leaders move last. So the order in which units are moved does not matter except for leaders who must move after all units assigned to their command have moved. So I'm not really used to doing that either. So when Dale Park's um, units were all done moving, the second Spanish division here, then then he moves. Yeah, I'm just not used to that, but but there it is. Well, I took a look at the Spanish rules <laughs> and tried to decipher them. They actually have a diagram illustrating this, so there is I I'm not sure why, but there is this rule that uh, you, you can pass through flank hex sides. So what if I understand the diagram and the text correctly, eight or more strength points here, meaning that this hex side has this unit has 12 strength. So I think what they mean is this hex side has 12, this hex side each of the six hex sides have 12. This is a front hex side. This is a flank hex side. And so they're saying that a unit cannot pass through this unit could not move for example, from here, here, and then here, because it passed a front hex side that has eight or more strength points. But this unit can go through here, because it passed flank hex sides. Well, it passed flank hex sides, period. So, very interesting. I, <laughs> again, I... I guess it's, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, it must reflect an, an interpretation of linear combat, 250 meter hexes. Okay, I want to talk about this charging, this cavalry unit, and there's another one just off the camera over there. Um, so this cavalry unit is the first one that wants to charge. Again, I don't have any marker or anything. I think that it would need a you know declaration marker. Um, uh, because it has to do a morale check and it can be forced to retreat because of that morale check but that I'm thinking that must be during the and I'm assuming here that must be during the shock combat phase so um, so again I just have to remember um, oh well so I have two yeah, two cavalry charges to to take care of in the shock combat. So let's do French defensive fire. There was nothing for French defensive fire, and no results. We only had the one fire here because I remembered um, defensive fire is only against adjacent hexes, even artillery. So all this French artillery is not firing defensively. Um, this one and others. Um, and cavalry aren't firing. So I only had this infantry firing against this charging um, Spanish uh, cavalry and they missed. So then we went to Spanish offensive fire and I, I want to show this artillery fire. So first of all here's the Spanish artillery. First of all this is their their um, field of fire. It's through their front hexes, through their front hex sides. So here and out here. So they decide because of this, well, avoiding this crest, this artillery is going to fire straight down the hex line. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is, uh, so it's within this artillery unit's field of fire. It's heavy cavalry because it's three dots. Heavy cavalry has a range of six, one, two, three, five, six, so, the, so it's within range. Um, the way you do range at three or more hexes is its half firepower. 
So the artillery has a firepower of six, halved at three or more hexes. Uh, so it's three. Um, it rolled a five, um, which is plus one for heavy cavalry or heavy artillery. Have I been saying cavalry? I hope I haven't. Artillery. Heavy artillery has a plus one, and that's the only. It has a C morale, no, no modifier. So it's um, plus one. So it's five plus one is six. Six on the three column of the fire table is an M result or morale check. The um, the French uh, infantry is D morale there. D morale. They roll a four. Which means, which is no, which, which is no result, or in other words, they succeeded, so they passed their morale check. Again, that's that's a morale table. This this game again, again, this may maybe this is more common to miniatures, um, but I, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't remember playing very often, if at all, ever with a morale table. So instead of having some number on the counter that you're trying to roll equal to or less or equal to or more or whatever, no, they have a table. So it's it's a D morale infantry. Here's the D morale. Roll one die. There are no there are modifiers here, but none apply um, to our case here. So it's just a straight four, which is a no effect. So.